what do you have to understand about yourself? First, your life is in a mess. Don't like to hear that? Well, maybe it proves that it's true. Your life is in a mess. Maybe you'll say to me, maybe, if you're like the average person I run in, into, your life is in a mess. People will say to me, what do you mean my life is in a mess? I'm doing pretty well in my studies. I got good parents. I got good relations with my family. I've got a boyfriend. I've got a girlfriend. Uh, everybody likes me. I'm doing well at sports. And I have a pretty brilliant career ahead of me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You think your life is not in a mess? He says, no. All right, tell me. Here's the acid test. Ever feel lonely? Any heartache? Ever get upset by anything? You mean, aren't we supposed to get upset? You want the clean, clear, simple answer? Yeah, no. You mean not be upset by anything? That's right, you heard me. So, <clears throat> ever suffer any interior conflict? You mean all your relationships are going well with everybody? Well, no, your life is in a mess. You mean you're enjoying every single minute of your life? Well, not quite. Well, see what I told you? It's in a mess. Hey, wait a minute. The incarnation. Yeah, yeah. All right. Bye. See you later. Alligator. <laughs> Why argue? I'm not interested in arguing with you, period. I know because I was doing that all along. Not interested in arguing. You either face the fact that your life is in a mess or you don't. You don't want to face it. I've got nothing to say to you. And your life is in a mess means you're a victim of heartache, at least occasionally. You feel lonely. There's emptiness staring at you. You're scared. You're scared? Yeah. Your life is in a mess. You mean we're not supposed to be scared? No, sir or madam, as the case may be. No. Not supposed to be scared. About anything? About anything. All right, let's talk about you. Fearlessness. You don't know what it means. And the tragedy is you don't think it's available. It's so easy to get. Since they told you it's not available, you never tried to find it. But it's right here all over the Bible, and you won't see it because they told you it's not available. You anxious for the future? Any whiff of anxiety, worry, upset? Yeah, you're in a mess. How about that? Want to clean it up? I'll clean it up for you in five minutes, depending on how ready you are. You don't have to move out of that chair. You could be sitting in that chair, and you could clean it up in five minutes. And I mean that. This isn't a sales gimmick. I mean it. It's so simple, and it's so deadly serious that people miss it. <laughs> and you can have it. Life is extraordinary. Life is delightful. You could enjoy it. You wouldn't have a minute of tension. Not one. No pressure. No anxiety. You want it? Not possible. Never been done. Cannot be done. No spirit of research, of investigation. Let's find out. Let's go. No, no, no. Can't be done. I don't want to hear you. I mean, our priests have told us it can't be done. Our psychologists tell us it cannot be done. You coming to tell us it can be done? Out. <laughs> Too bad. All right. So the first thing, are you ready to admit that your life is in a mess? Second. This is a bit tougher, OK? You don't want to get out of it. You do not want to get out of the mess. You Talk to any psychologist who's worth his name, and he'll confirm that. The last thing a client wants is a cure. He doesn't want to get cured. He wants relief. Eric Byrne, one of your great psychiatrists here in the United States, puts it very graphically. I won't give his exact words, because I'm a bit scared. You know, this is traveling, how much did he say, 44,000 miles? I better use a respectable language. He says, uh, he says, imagine a client who's up to his uh, nose in a cesspool, OK? Yeah, he calls it liquid S-H-I-T. So uh, 
Uh, he's up to his uh, nose in, uh, in a cesspool. All right. And he's coming to you. And you know what he's saying to you? He's saying, could you help me so people won't make waves? <laughs> Doesn't want to get out. Oh, no, 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 get out, for heaven's sake, no. <laughs> Just help me so they won't make waves. That's what he wants. He doesn't want to get out. He doesn't. You want to test that on yourself? I'll give you a couple of minutes. You could do it right now. You want to test it on yourself? OK, here goes. Suppose you could be blissfully happy, but you're not going to get that degree. Ready to barter your degree for happiness? You're not going to get that girlfriend of yours or that boyfriend. Ready to barter them for happiness? You know something? You're not going to be a success. You're going to fail. And everybody say, he's a bum. But you'll be happy. You'll be blissfully happy. Ready to barter the good opinion of people for that? Oh, no. I'll give you time to think about it later. Oh, no. No, sir. Or oh, madam. I'm told about that Chinese student who was learning English. And uh, he learned it from a book, of course, the poor kid. And this lady says, would you have a cup of tea? He says, uh, Yes, sir or madam, as the case may be. <laughs> so, so there it is. So no, sir. Or, so anytime I say no, you could take the madam for granted, as the case may be. All right? So no, sir. He's not ready. When I was in Syracuse last summer, I read a nice ad that says, you know, there's this girl holding on to a boy, the, the ad in the newspaper, and she says, I don't want to be happy. The only happy people I know are in a lunatic asylum. I want to be miserable with you. <laughs> See what I mean? I don't want to be happy. I want to be miserable with you. She, she'll develop a theology about the damn thing after a <laughs> while. They don't want to get out of it. They don't want it. They don't want it. They don't want it. I don't want happiness. I want fame. I don't want happiness. I want to get that gold medal at the Olympics. Suppose I tell you, look, give up the gold medal. You'll be happy, damn it. What do you want that gold medal for? What do you want to be the top, the, the, the boss of the corporation for? I'll make you happy. On $10,000 a year, I'll make you happy. <gasps> no, 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 no. Give me my money. My money, my money, my money, my money. <laughs> See what I mean now? Now you're catching on. They don't want to be happy. They don't want to live. They want money. You know that guy Ram Chandra, the rickshaw puller? Huh? Huh? He lived like a king. He lived like a king. I mean it. I mean it. Foreign aid is fine. He didn't need foreign aid. Not to live. He needed foreign aid for comfort. He needed it for health. Not for life. He might have needed it for longevity, which means, you know, a long life. But you call that a long you call that life? Long existence. Not to live. He was living. I was dead. He knew what life was. He was happy. He was like the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. He was an incarnation of the Sermon on the Mount. It was all there in the Sermon on the Mount. I discovered later. It's all there. I hadn't seen it. He lived like a king. What does it mean to live like a king? You know what idiots think it means? And the world is peopled with them, believe me. Idiots. You know what they think it means? It means moving around in limousines, having everybody curtsy to them and salute them and all that sort of rubbish, all that sort of garbage, have their names in their headlines. They think that means having power over people. They think that's what it means to live like a king. I'll tell you what I think it means. They're not living like kings. They're slaves. They're terrified. Look at their faces on television. For heaven's sake, those kings and queens and presidents and the rest of them. Look at them on television. You'd recognize it at once. He's scared. You know why he's scared? Because he wants power. That's why. He wants prestige. He wants a reputation. That's why. He's not living like a king. I'll tell you what it means to live like a king. To know no anxiety at all. No inner conflict at all. No tension. No pressures. No upset. No heartache. 
So then what are you left with? Happiness, undiluted. People sometimes say, what do I do to be happy? You don't do anything to be happy, silly. You can't acquire happiness. You know why? Because you have it. You got it right now. You got it. But you're the whole time blocking it in your stupidity. You're blocking it. Stop blocking it, you'll have it. If I could show you how to get rid of your conflicts, your anxieties, your tensions, your pressures, your emptiness, your loneliness, your despair, your depression, your heartache, you get rid of all of that, what are you left with? Sheer undiluted happiness, that's what you have. The Chinese put it beautifully. When the eye is unobstructed, they say, the result is sight. Don't do anything to get sight. When the eye is unobstructed, the result is sight. When the ear is unobstructed, the result is hearing. When the mouth is unobstructed, the result is taste. I will add later. When the mind is unobstructed, the result is truth. And when the heart is unobstructed, the result is joy and love. You've got it all, but it's obstructed. Drop it. So second major step, you don't want to get out of it. You want comfort. You want your little possessions. You want the little things that society has taught you are essential for happiness, falsely. You want that. You don't want to get out of the mess. Those are the things that are creating the mess. 